Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Tyler. Your name is, I don't know, Jim? Jim, James, Jimothy. So the art fundamentals are, well, fundamental to learn. And it's important to give them the appropriate time and attention when learning them. But they can be a little more on the dry side and even kind of boring at times. So if you feel that you're in a position where you probably should be working on those fundamental exercises, but you find yourself procrastinating or putting them off because you don't want to do them, today we're gonna to take a look at trying to make some of those more fun. So this might be simple or obvious to some of you, but here's the general idea. Allow yourself room to just make it yours, be yourself, and turn the exercise into something that will motivate you to do the exercise. Most of you are probably familiar with this. This is a two-point perspective exercise where you've got your horizon line, two vanishing points, and you're just drawing boxes in perspective. It's a great exercise to practice perspective. It helps you understand things in three-dimensional space, and you can do this in one, two, three, and five-point perspective. But it can be a little boring. So I like to play music, and you know what else are boxes? Guitar amps and pedals. So I'll turn one of these boxes into an amp. Just turn these boxes into something you like. Maybe it's old leather bound books and you can draw them standing upward, sideways, stacked one on top of the other. Just have fun with it. Here's the thing though, this is sort of a distraction from the exercise you should be doing. It's a little like the rendering stage in my Draw Anything video. The details don't help you learn very much. You'll learn faster if you can stick to the exercise of just drawing boxes. But again, if you're procrastinating because you don't want to do the exercise or you're just completely avoiding it, if this helps you to do that perspective exercise, then go for it. It's not all bad either. These lines that I'm adding as I carve into the shape are still in perspective, so I am still practicing perspective. But don't put too much time into these sketches. I wouldn't even take it as far as I do here. Don't worry too much about the details. Just do enough for your brain to be like, yeah, it's an amp now. Just enough to make it more fun for you. Here's another exercise where we've gotten rid of the grid entirely and we're practicing just drawing boxes in open space in different perspectives. There's a bunch of videos out there that go over this stuff. Modern Day James has a great one about rotating boxes in space. So check that out if you're interested. Again, I think you'll get more mileage just sticking to the boxes. So don't turn all of them into something. Maybe treat it like a bonus. If you do 10 boxes, then you can turn the 10th one into something that you like. 10 more boxes and you get to make another amp or pedal or whatever it is. Obviously do whatever ratio you want, but personally I think that if you can stick to the base exercise and then do this sort of thing every once in a while as like a bonus, that would be a pretty good way of doing it. This is sort of similar to a video that I made for Tyler Edlin's YouTube channel about breaking things down to their simple shapes, like a train just being a bunch of cylinders. But here we're making it even more simple. The object you're drawing is just the one shape. Sure, there's some cylinders for volume knobs and stuff like that, but overall it's pretty clearly just the one shape. So you can do the same exercise with cylinders, rotating different cylinders into space, and of course you can turn them into coffee mugs or cardioid microphones or something like that. Let's look at circles and ellipses. So again, I think doing a page of circles and ellipses will be more beneficial because you'll get through more mileage more quickly, but if you want to treat yourself, here's an idea. Sketch a bunch of circles on a page. Now turn them into Pokeballs from Pokemon by drawing two ellipses through them. This is actually a great exercise because there's still quite a bit of accuracy involved. You have things like the constraints of the ball for your ellipses to fit into, and getting a second ellipse in the right spot to make the band requires accuracy. You can also practice different degrees of ellipses, meaning more wide or more narrow, by essentially rotating the balls around. So if you need a break from just sketching circles and ellipses, Draw a bunch of Pokeballs. Filling a few pages of Pokeball sketches makes it more fun, but you're still getting some mileage in. You can do the same kind of thing with rendering. Typically you practice rendering the simple shapes first, with different lighting scenarios like daylight, local light sources like a lamp, which will affect things like shadow direction and light fall off differently. Once you've got the hang of that, you can move on to more complex objects. Well, if we continue this idea of the object just being that one shape, then there's not much difference between rendering a cube and rendering an amplifier. It can also act a bit like a stepping stone in case moving on to more complex shapes seems daunting to you. In Scott Robertson's book, How to Render, they show a cube like this one with one corner that's darker than the rest. 
and it's to practice different local values being affected by the same light. So you've got an object with multiple local values. What else has this? Drum roll, please. Pokeballs again. Okay, a bunch of stuff have multiple values, but so do Pokeballs. So I'm sure you've probably seen videos on how to render a sphere. They're everywhere. But if we take our Pokeball again, it's the exact same process. You're just rendering two different local values on one object being affected by the same light source. So it's another great way to practice that cube exercise from Scott's How to Render. You can do this sort of thing with any of the fundamentals. I don't remember all of the details of this, but someone was talking about not enjoying live figure drawing classes with poses and gestures and stuff like that. They were really just interested in doing fantasy characters in knight armor. But they understood that figure drawing classes are important for anatomy and all that, so they would attend classes with the plan of adding armor to the sketches later on, and that was enough to get them to go to the life drawing sessions. And of course there are a lot of life drawing classes where the model is wearing costumes like armor and other period pieces, that kind of stuff. So that's an option as well. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas or tricks to get you through the sometimes grind of fundamental exercises. So obviously this wasn't an exhaustive list, but hopefully it'll spark some ideas and help you get through some of those more mundane exercises and help fight that procrastination. Let me know if you have other cool ways of making these exercises more fun. Thanks for watching, be good to one another, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.